Hi everyone, and yes, I'm back with another preview, and this one is the ROG Strix X570E Gaming. And I'm trying to get these out as quick as possible because I know that uh, the rest of them are with couriers at the moment, because I actually drove today to get this, to, well, to try and pick this up a little bit earlier and to save a little bit of time so I could bring you something a little bit different a little bit early. So X570 is ready for Ryzen 3000 or uh, Zen 2. All of the twos and the threes does get kind of confusing. It gets even worse when we mention the fact that it's PCI Express 4. There's also uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 just to get all of the numbers all confuddled and uh, it's a bit crazy. Now, this is just a preview. There's certain things I can and I can't say to you um, uh, about what's going on. I'm not allowed to show you the board with a CPU in it. I'm not allowed to talk to you about performance or anything like that. So literally going to be going around and talking to you and showing you the actual kind of physicality of the board and what's going on with the box to kind of give you an early look before the madness on the 7th of July. So X570 chipset, you can see that the first sort of um, mention at the top for third and second gen Ryzen and uh, Ryzen with Vega graphics, that's the uh, APUs. You can see about the expansion slots, multi-GPU down at the bottom. And then if we go over here, this actually has 2.5 gig LAN on it, as you can see here, and Wi-Fi uh, 802.11ax which is Wi-Fi 6. You've got two um, uh, M.2 heat sinks. You can also see about the um, flashback button on the back of the uh, IO shield, and then all about addressable IO headers and all of that sort of, uh, sorry, uh, addressable RGB headers and all of that sort of stuff, but they're calling them Gen 2. I wonder what that might mean. I wonder if, yeah, we'll talk about that. I know it's a pain, but in the box first, just to cover it, you get your Wi-Fi uh, antenna, that, so you've got that. Then you've got your manual, your driver CD. This one doesn't appear to have the extra badge inside it, but you do get some stickers going on. You also do get your Welcome to the Republic things for um, purchasing the Rock Strict product, blah, 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 blah. Now, this is something I do with all of my videos and it annoys some people, but cable mod, money off voucher. The code on the other side of this can only be used once. If you do use it, please post underneath or Tweet me, send me an Instagram or something so I know what you bought because there you have it. There is the code. Love to see what you do with it. Anyway, so opening the box itself. Ah, oh, there's a door hanger. So you've got accessible air. Yeah, I'm not going to read it to you. So you've got the uh, two sides to that. You get your screws for your M.2. I do keep seeing it popping up in the comments. People wonder why the motherboard screws are not in the box for attaching it to your case. The screws for the motherboard come with the case itself, not with the motherboard. So you get a thermal probe here. We'll find out where the header for that is in a minute. And then what you do get is uh, four normal uh, SATA cables. And the reason why I say normal is because they're not braided or anything. And you get two straight ones, you get two 90 degree ones. Uh, and then you get a couple of um, RGB extensions. One of them is for addressable, so the three pin one. That is the addressable cable. And then you get a normal four pin um, RGB cable as well. Main event time though. So, I will go around really slowly to show you around the board. Don't forget you can pause at any moment in time. There is gonna be a lot of stuff that I'm just gonna be skirting around, but you can, if you pause, read into it, you might get a little bit of more information that I'm not necessarily allowed to draw attention to. But we'll start up here, and that's just because I wanna pick it up so that I can show you. The, you get an eight pin and a four pin CPU power for the top left hand side corner, but you can see that the eight pin here is shielded. Now whether that's for extra bracing, <coughs> excuse me, or whether that is for um, shielding or anything like that, don't really know. Uh, it's something that I'll, I'll look at in the reviewer's guide if and when they turn up, because these are so new that we don't have any supporting material from Asus about them uh, yet. Uh, there might be stuff on the website, but literally, like I said, I come home from driving up to Hemel from Southampton. It's only, I think it's about 90 miles. Um, each way but it was yeah literally i'm just trying to get these videos crammed out and smashed out so you guys have got something to look at and watch 
Now I can obviously zoom in quite a bit with this new camera and it does show up kind of well. So we have CPU fan, then we've got AIO pump and then you've got a spare CPU, so CPU um, optional there on the top right. Then you've also got your RGB header up there. Now that's a four pin RGB header, so that's a normal one. But when we come slightly down here, what you can see is that's your addressable one. Uh, then you can also see the indicator lights up there for when the system's posting. So you've got your boot, your VGA, your CPU, your DRAM. If they stay lit and the system doesn't boot, then uh, that will give you an indicator of the issue. Uh, then when we come down, we've got 24 pin, and then you've got USB 3.2 Gen 2 external header. And then we come down a little bit further, you actually get to see the ROG tag. Now I know this is, oh, I thought, actually, I thought that was um, fabric like they were before, but it's like a rubbery kind of texture to it. So that's slightly different. Then if I slide my camera down in an ever so, ever so professional way, you can see that we've got eight SATAs there. And then in the bottom corner, this is, you've got um, your front panel header, speaker header there, and then you've got a little header here. So those two posts there, that is so that you can short those out and clear the CMOS. Um, uh, you can get like little switches that you can put on those if you want. It's just a jumper header, basically. You can do it with a screwdriver, you can do it with a, a switch. Um, an old case switch, lots of options, really for overclocking or if you're going to be uh, needing to clear the BIOS a lot. You get another um, RGB uh, addressable and normal RGB, M.2 fan down at the bottom, that will just say something different in the BIOS. There's no actual M.2 fan there, but it would be if you were to use it and you could plug that in. Uh, you've got a water pump header there. The water pump headers, just so that you're aware, will spin the fan at 100% because it's meant for an AIO pump. You can turn it down, but it will be powered at 100% to start off with. Chassis fan 2 down there too. Then you've got USB. Um, three external normal case header then you still got two USB 2s that's great that's the thermal sensor header that I said to you about before this is an Asus node header this is proprietary header only for Asus stuff at the moment I've not seen too much other bits PCI post readout obviously that all the numbers change depending on what's going on during the post then we've got the Supreme FX audio down the left hand side with the uh, Japanese capacitors then, if I look here just quickly, what I can say to you is you can see a chipset fan. That's just something to do with the fact it is PCI Express 4. Things, we don't know whether they're getting warmer or not, but we do know there are a lot more things and a lot more uh, bits of hardware that need to go on the board to be able to make the PCI Express work properly with all of the drives and the uh, PCI Express actual like graphics card lanes and stuff. And there are, you know, switches and that, that basically means there's a lot more on these boards. So you're probably going to see across the board with all brands that uh, comparing boards from last gen might seem a little bit more expensive. And that's why, because there's just a lot more hardware on the board. You can also see there, there's chassis fan one. So you've got chassis fan. Let's have a look. Chassis fan one is there. Chassis fan 2 is down here. Then you've also got a water pump header and you've got an M.2 fan header if you did want to put a fan on the M.2. That might be handy for the PCR Express 4 ones. We don't really know that yet. Only time is going to tell. And there are three more fan headers at the top. So you've got a water pump header again at the top or an AIO header it's labelled as and then two CPU headers. So that's it in total uh, across the whole of the board. Then when we swing around to the back, what you do get compared to some of the other boards I've seen so far is you do get HDMI and a display port. Now the HDMI and display port is only going to work if you have a CPU with graphics built into it. So the new Ryzen um, 3000 ones like the 3, uh, uh, 3950X and 3900X, they don't have graphics built in. So these will not work. You would need an APU for these to work. So just kind of keep that in mind. It has caused some confusion with some people in the past. You've got the uh, BIOS flashback header here. Tiny little switch on it though. We're used to these being much bigger, but it is there. 
Um, then you've got your USB, your 2.5 gigabit uh, LAN, gigabit LAN. You've got your Type C USB here. It does come with Wi Fi 6 uh, enabled Wi Fi as well. And something that I have been saying is there are Wi Fi 6 routers out there now, which I'm literally very crudely going to put in the shot just so that you can see because they are here, I've just not had a chance to do a complete review yet, but now we've got motherboards with Wi-Fi 6 on as well, it's going to make my life a little bit easier. Then when we have a look just below, you can see that you've got your audio um, connectors there, and really now it's time for me to do some funky monkey stuff with magic cables. Okay, now I do not have this powered up with a proper power supply, it's actually by USB, and you can see that there's no CPU in the socket. That's just to clarify for NDA so that I don't get into trouble. Up on the far left hand corner, you can see that the IO you've got, uh, the LEDs are actually at the top of that plastic panel. And then because they, they kind of project down through the acrylic, but you do get the ROG eye and quite a funky Strix logo there. Obviously you can turn these all off if you want. There is also a bit more argy bargy down here. Uh, two slot graphics card is going to cover the bulk of it up. It's a shame it wasn't a little bit lower or maybe just kind of pointing out in the dark that it wasn't down here or something so that it was in a position where you would see the, a lot of it because like I said you're really not going to see very much of it when a graphics card is actually going to be in there. Now this is just in a demo mode it's just cycling round you'll be able to use this with the new Aura software um, so if you wanted to turn it off or you wanted to set it to white, red, something static, set up your own um, interchanging colours, then you can do all that with the software. Uh, it is one thing I would say, it would be nice if we could fix the colours or turn the colours off in the BIOS now, rather than having to use actual um, software all the time. I think it'd be quite a clean way of us being able to do it without a little bit of bloatware on the OS. They don't normally listen to me with stuff like this though. So that is it for this one. I might get another one live tonight. I'm doing as much as I possibly can do. Please, uh, you can click through to the OC3D website. If you haven't subscribed and you would like to, hit the bell as well, because then you'll get updates with my um, latest videos. If you're a regular and you haven't hit the bell, that's probably why you're not seeing all of my videos. But for now at least, this is the tiniest one with another preview for you. The main reviews will be live on the 7th of July.